The movies back in the 80s and 90s showed the next century defined by high-tech technologies like flying cars, robots, and space colonies. Well, while we have robots and work on space colonies has begun, the one thing that we're most disappointed about is that we still don't see any flying cars zooming about. Well, according to reports, we might still see that happen. Hello and welcome to our channel. Today, we're going to tell you whether we're going to see flying cars anytime soon or not. So, let us begin. The one thing that we would love to see on the road or, pardon us, in the air is flying cars. Just imagine dozens, if not thousands of flying vehicles zooming around in the air. Well, one plus of this is that it would make the life of pedestrians much easier. However, getting cars to fly is easier said than done. There are many issues with this proposal, and not all of them are due to financial constraints. Well, the first that you would have to consider is the feasibility of bringing a car into the air. Like, we have proper road networks and laws in place for how cars are supposed to behave on the road. Like, there are red lights, speed limits, lane directions, and much more to guide drivers on how they're supposed to behave on the road. Similarly, we have guidelines for helicopters and planes. But what we don't have is a tested model for how flying cars would fit into our everyday life. We can't simply have them whizzing over our heads without any rules or regulations. Like, we don't have any specific lanes, nor could we enforce any sort of speed limit. Well, without them, you could expect a lot of fatal crashes and property damage to buildings and bridges, not to mention the poor folks on the ground. You must remember that whenever a car manufacturer starts developing a car, they have years of data on vehicles that have already been built and tested on the ground. Nothing like this exists for flying cars. For example, whenever Ford or Mercedes sets about developing a new vehicle, they use the data from all their previous entries to improve on the already existing technology to make their cars safer and more efficient. Nothing like this exists for flying vehicles. It would be a one-off show and will only be able to gauge the implication after these vehicles enter the mainstream. Another thing that we have to consider is that these flying cars would be pretty expensive to own and maintain. After all, they aren't just any normal vehicle. You would need to build some sort of special garage or landing pad for them. Plus, about the fuel costs, it could end up being a pretty expensive endeavor. So, it means that only the ultra-rich will be able to afford them, at least in the beginning. Plus, you would need special kinds of stations so that these cars can be accommodated because no normal gas station or charging station is going to cut it with these cars. Oh, and we almost forgot. You would need some sort of special license to operate these cars. A normal driving license won't be enough, which means you'll have to comply with a plethora of regulations. For example, your proficiency must be above reproach and you must have a knowledge about all the things that you're supposed to do in the air. It won't be like driving a normal car, and it also won't be like piloting a jet. It's something in between that we believe in itself will be more difficult to manage than either of the two options that we've mentioned earlier. Now there's one bit of good news for you guys. Despite all these challenges, one company out there is looking to make all your dreams come true. Yes, they are planning to build flying cars. Aeromobiles AM 4.0 is a commercially accessible flying vehicle that merges aeronautics and automotive technology. The two-seater prototype is currently touring the United States, giving the general public, investors, purchasers, and operators a first-hand look at the game-changing product that is now up for pre-order and will be shipped to clients in 2024. The AM Next, a four-seater aerial ride-hailing service, 
was revealed in March and is scheduled to debut in 2027. CEO Patrick Hessel said the company's long-term goal is to provide millions of customers in the U.S. with access to flying cars. The flying car was built by a team of engineers and designers in Slovakia after 10 years of study and over 350,000 hours of engineering, design, and testing. In roughly three minutes, the vehicle can switch modes. Some have compared it to a supersonic flying vehicle, while others have called it a lightweight plane that can be driven. According to Hessel, the two-seater is the first mass-produced flying car ever. Starting next year, a few hundred vehicles will be produced and marketed in the U.S. for between $1.7 and $3 million. New purchasers will be invited to join a global Guinness Book of World Records tour. However, this development didn't come without its challenges. According to Hessel, who was named Ernst & Young's 2015 Entrepreneur of the Year, the primary difficulty in developing a flying automobile is the vehicle's weight as a result of the automotive technology housed within it. He explains that this is why there aren't any flying cars available. For this reason, you must employ lightweight construction techniques and reduce the payload. As a result, lightweight carbon fiber reinforced polymers are used for the majority of Aeromobile's airframe structures. The power supply was another area of technical difficulty. Hessel explains, we required a lightweight but powerful engine and it needed to fulfill car pollution criteria. Aircraft engines are notoriously polluting and often lack emission treatment equipment, making this a difficult task. The 300 horsepower turbocharged internal combustion engine was a popular choice for Aeromobile. The driving range is 320 miles or 515 kilometers and the flying range is 320 miles or 460 miles, 740 kilometers, depending on dual or single occupancy, at a top driving speed of 100 miles per hour, 161 kilometers per hour, and a flying cruise speed of 160 miles per hour or 257 kilometers per hour. Hessel claims that Aeromobile, which uses ordinary unleaded automobile fuel and has an onboard pollution treatment system, is the cleanest plane available. Flying this requires a pilot's license. Despite the progress of this company in bringing this technology to the fore, the problem remains that this flying car has a lot of prerequisites that need to be met before it can be flown. Another concern, as we mentioned earlier, are regulations. According to Hugh Martin of Lacuna Technologies, cities are increasingly getting concerned about how they'll manage traffic for flying cars in the future. Some examples of possible regulations for autonomous vehicles include restrictions on where they can take off and land, when they can fly, and how far apart vehicles must be. According to him, the FAA and NASA in the United States are collaborating with drone and air taxi manufacturers to plan for the future of air travel. But the main competitor to flying cars is EVOTLs. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's rules might not apply to a newly designed flying vehicle if it's approved by the FAA. Furthermore, they can take off and land in any open area. This is because rotors enable takeoff and landing from practically any surface. The correct term for these vehicles is electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, EVOTLs, not flying automobiles. They're noiseless and carbon free since electric motors power them. Suzuki, a Japanese business, plans to debut their flying taxis in 2023, and Uber is close on its heels. Commercial air taxis are planned for 2024 via TechWire by companies like Volocopter, while Vertical Aerospace Group 
is slated to deploy around 1,000 EVTOLs to Virgin Atlantic, American Airlines, and Avalon Holdings in the same year. Now, that would be something, seeing dozens of these mini helicopters flying around our skies, but obviously, they don't have the same feel and vibe as a flying car. But at least you'll be able to cut your daily commute in half. It's sure to make your boss happy. So, which of these two things are you more excited about? Would you be content with EVOTLs, or do you still want something that truly flies and drives? Let us know in the comments below. So that's all the time we had today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel, and do hit the bell icon on your way out. See you all next time. Adios.